Thank you. We got to tell you something. That is a such, such a beautiful tune. It really is. I mean, it touches the heart. The thing is, for it to be really, really, really appreciated, everybody, you know, needs to join in because it's not just me singing. It's all of us singing together. I have a small part, and you have a small part. And together, those two parts make a big part. And we're singing for the pleasure of the Lord. We're singing for the pleasure of Krishna. So if you have a voice, and not just now, I want to say this because I travel all over the country and I see this a lot. You know, sometimes, you know, we're sitting in the audience and we're expecting to be entertained. We are here for the Lord. We want Krishna to notice us. This is the part of the part. We want Krishna to heal us. We want Krishna to receive the love from our heart. So everything else that's going on, we put that aside. We put that aside. This is time for Krishna. This is time to really connect. It's so important. It's so, it has such a value. You know, sometimes I see that a lot of people walk away from the temple. They walk away and they don't get 100% of the benefit that comes with being in the temple. That's because they're not fully here. They're not present. They're somewhere else. And that, it's painful to me. You know, it's really painful to me to see that people take their time to come into the temple and they just kind of like sit there. It's like, okay, when's Pashan? When do we eat? The food is really good here. When do we eat? <laughs> Well, it's true, the food is really good here, but there's something else that you can receive. There's something that you can receive here that you take with you throughout the whole week to help you with your spiritual understanding of yourself and of God. Otherwise, there's no point in being here. You know, go to the baseball game or do something else. But being here, it, 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 there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a valuable lesson and really giving your attention, not to me. It's not me that's speaking. I'm following what my spiritual master has ordered me to, to speak, what Prabhupada has ordered all of us to speak. And just look at how beautiful the Lord is on the altar. You know, so we, can, we can see the deities beyond our eyes. We can see through our hearts. That's what's that's what has to be purified. We, you know, I've been, I've been trying to do this practice since 1973. I was 17 year old, 17 years old when I first met Srila Prabhupada. 17. I could, I, I'll tell you something personal about me because most of you don't know me. I couldn't even read them. I was illiterate. I was illiterate. That's a gift that I don't think any of you have. They couldn't even read these books. Couldn't. For some reason, my karma put me in a very, very bad situation. And I was so desperate. I was so desperate. And, you know, sometimes it pains me when I see the people who have the gift of knowledge. They, 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 they put all of that in, in their material aspect and they leave very little for the spiritual part. You're going to get more from this than any education in any IT job, than anything that you can receive in this material world. Because once you leave, things, this goes with you. It goes with you. What is more important in your life is your spiritual bank account. Your material assets are temporary. Your spiritual assets are eternal. They're eternal. That's important. And so I was saying about, you know, we just came off a very, very important holiday of Nishringa How many of you are familiar with Nishringa Day? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Thank you. Nishringa Day is an incarnation of the Lord, and it's a long pastime of how. Prahlad Maharaj, his father 
was very, very, very abusive. He tried to kill his own son. Pretty bad, right? But when you think about it, there's killing right now going on every day. So the festival we just had with Rabbi Shringer, the story, and I'll just very quickly tell you the story. Most of you know. Um, Pilate's father was a great demon. He had very, he didn't have such nice qualities. He had very bad qualities. And he wanted his son to grow up like him, like most fathers do. You know, fathers are proud of their sons and daughters. So if I'm a doctor, I want my son to be a doctor. Right? I want my daughter to be a doctor. We want our children to be successful. We want, to, we, we want our children to be successful in positive things. Hiran uh, Yakashi, too, Pilad's father was teaching him all kinds of things that weren't godly. And, and, and Pilad was born uh, very, very, very elevated in his spiritual um, understanding. And he would preach to all the kids in school. You know, every time the teachers went out, he would, he would talk Krishna Kata, he would talk about Krishna. And he would explain to them, like I'm explaining to you, the value of life, what life is really meant for. So he would do this at five years old. Huh? Imagine it. So his father did not like this type of preaching. And he chastised the teachers, and he was very angry. He tried to poison his son. He tried so many ways. Which way did he try to kill his son? You can tell me one way. Who's the mic? Who's the mic? Oh. He tried to throw him off a cliff. Who else? Who's this? Who's speaking? Yes. He tried. His father tried to poison him. Who, who else? Come on. Somebody out there out knows? Give me another reason why. Yes. He threw him in the fire. Yes, this lady here with the black. Oh, she beat you to it. You get the next one. <laughs> Thank you. So, so this, yes. Just, just see. He tried to get his son trained. I mean, this is like the father. You know? Now, I'm going to share something very personal with you. Okay? There's mostly adults here. Because I think that in order for me to get my message across, you need to hear my conviction of why I'm, I, I get this understanding. You see, I grew up in New York City, and I grew up in orphanages. My father was never there, never. Okay, and I had a mother who was declared unfit by the state of New York. So I was put in institutions, not because I was bad, even though I was bad. <laughs> I was a little rascal, <laughs> but not not viciously. Just you know. Uh, you know, the, 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 the behavior of a young rascal, you know. <laughs> so I grew up in homes, and I grew up with nuns and priests. And, you know, I, I, I have to tell you, I suffered a lot of abuse, a lot of very heavy abuse. I won't go into detail. It's not necessary. I'm sure you can connect the pieces. You hear what's going on in my life. It's a very difficult struggle for me. I'm talking heavy abuse. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, okay? All these things were in what I had to come through to be able to understand what I'm talking about today. So I'm convinced. I'm convinced. And after meeting Srila Prabhupada in 1973, who was the founder of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, I experienced something that, you know, when I was 15, I tried to just finish my life, okay? So this story of Pallad tells you about all the suffering that Pallad went through, right? And he was, he was a great Vaishnava. I can't claim that to fame. I can't claim that. But I can tell you that there was a lot of suffering and anxiety. This material world, it's called Bhakalaya. 
Who knows what that means? Anyone? Yes. Yes. This material world is a This material world is a place of suffering. I'm sorry, you know, to have to tell a lot of you. Actually, I'm not sorry. But I mean, I really appreciate it. Every one of us sitting here today, every one of you have an enjoying spirit, okay? You have an enjoying spirit. You, every one of you. And if I'm wrong, you raise your hand and, and please correct me because I'm imperfect. Okay? Every one of you sitting here has a propensity to want to enjoy. Am I right or wrong? Is, is there anyone here who just, like, they just get up in the morning and say, you know what? God, I really want to suffer today, you know? I mean, I, I, that's, I, I really, I want to go outside and, and I just want to walk and I want to suffer. And if I'm, if I'm not suffering, I won't be happy. Does anyone? No, no. You want to be happy. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because God has that happiness. And we're part and parcel of God, so we have that same desire. The only difference is that we have a perverted way of trying to enjoy. It's material. It's temporary. You know, there's a saying, it's like chewing the chew. You know what chewing the chew means? If you see a piece of gum on the ground, you know what gum is? I don't know what they call it. They, they have new names for everything now these days. <laughs> it has a new name and it's got to be politically correct. I'm not all for that. Anyway, I don't want to disrespect anyone, but chewing gum. Remember, as a child, we used to always chew this bazooka bubble gum. I didn't know if they had any. You, you know this bazooka? There was always a little comic inside, and you chew, and you chew, and chew, and chew, and then you, you know, after a while, it's just like you know, you're chewing, there's like nothing left. You know, there's like, you can't swallow it. You know? <laughs> it's not meant for like, it's not a meal or a snack. It's just a sugar rush, you know? <laughs> you get a little sugar rush when you spit it out. And, it, and that's the pleasure. And it's gone, and you need another piece of gum to get some more sweetness. It's temporary. It's temporary. If someone were to take the gum and throw it on the ground, I don't think anybody here would say, well, maybe there's some more sugar in here and put it in your mouth. Because it's gone. It's done. That is the nature of this world. There is pleasure. There is pleasure. But it's temporary. I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> there is enjoyment. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, all this dogma, but I mean, no, there is enjoyment here. And there's a way of having higher pleasure that's permanent. There is a way, I'm telling you. Because you're listening to someone who, 15 years old, just prayed every day, I want to die. That was my prayer. Truthfully, I, I mean, I was suffering so much. I do not want to live anymore. And you want to know something? This, is right now, this day and age, right here in this town, and especially among young people, it's happening over and over and over again. That's right. That's right. I don't read the newspapers. I don't listen to the up to that. I know the statistics are there. I walk around and people come to me and they tell me I was sitting on an airplane. Okay. And I met this 60 year old. I travel all over the country by the way. I'm sitting on the airplane and this 60 year old woman, a 60, yeah, uh, white body female. I, 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 I had something in my seat and I was trying to get up and I said, could you please put this? In the, in the overhead for me. And so she did it, and I looked at her, and I gave her my silly smile, <laughs> like I'm doing now. <laughs> and, and I said, thank you. Just like that. I said, thank you. And she, when she sat down, she looked at me, and she said, 
listen, are you listening? This is what she, this is what she said to me because it was a two seater. It was a Delta Airlines, and I'm not promoting Delta. So, <laughs> so are you listening? <laughs> You know, I get a free ticket or something. So, so she sits down, right? And she looks at me right in my eye and she says, there's something about you. She said, I felt it after you smiled at me. And when she said that, I took that. But what I knew that that wasn't for me, it was for Srila Prabhupada. Because I just told you a minute ago, I tried to end my life. So if I'm here... I am here by the grace of Srila Prabhupada. Okay? That's one of the problems that we have sometimes. It's like we want to be constantly glorified. You know? Humility is seen as something weak. Humility is one of the most powerful assets that you can have. Because when you're humble, nothing can disturb you. When you're humble, you begin to find the process that we're following is the science of self-realization. And it's a very difficult science because you have to face a lot of realities about yourself. One of them that you have to realize is that when you look in the mirror, you begin to realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not number one. You know, you have to give up a lot of this pride. You know, you have to give up anger. You have to give up lust. There are so many things that we're embedded with, you know, and we have to learn truly how to love ourselves. Then we can love God. It is so vital. We just came back from an interfaith gathering. Do uh, you remember what town that was? Westboro, Massachusetts. Does anyone know what Westboro is? It was an interfaith, and there were this is the commercial. Well, while the commercial's on, you can share. And don't think about Delta. <laughs> so we, we, we had this beautiful program. It's called Faith in Tune in Tune 2, an international music festival. And actually, I want to apologize because I think you were supposed to be singing today. And I just don't bother my own room. So in front of everyone who doesn't even know what I'm talking about, I want to apologize to you. Hare Krishna. So, so the festival, she's um, how a harmonium player. Um, thank you. Thank you. And it's a very beautiful family. So they had they had groups from the Church of Jesus Christ. They had the Baha'i Faith. They had the Sheikhs uh, Society, Allah Hamrad Academy, Sri Radha Krishna Mandir, Cross Acts of Marlboro, International Society of Krishna Consciousness. Oh, that's us. Um, Islamic Society of Greater Wisdom. So all these religious groups got together and they just, they sang. It was a beautiful festival, beautiful day for the festival. And everybody was in. So we just came from them. And, um, you know, it, it was when, 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 when we finished singing uh, the Temple of uh, Banamali, but we were supposed to, we, we, they were thinking Banamali was going to speak something. And, and since I was the senior male there, uh, in age and otherwise, um, they asked if I would say a few words. And I just basically said to all those religious groups, I mean, there were Jewish people there, everybody, Indian, lots of Indians there in these bodies. And I, I ended it just by saying that any, and I, I, I heard Sheila Prabhupada say this, you know, and, and I'm not quoting, any, listen to me, any true religion that you're following or that you believe in, one of the ways to detect whether it's genuine and when it's changing you, right, is if you're learning to love God. Learning to love God. Learning to love Krishna. You know? 
It's not such an easy thing, but it's available. It's available, you know. And 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 you know, it, you know, I, if you, you know, in, in your pursuit of of spiritual life or religious life, it's not that you have to give up anything. You just live off carrots and celery, you know, and that you can't play sports. I was a tennis pro. I was a teaching tennis pro, and I was practicing Krishna consciousness. I raised a family. I raised three daughters. One of them teaches right here. Her and her husband. Uh, in, uh, she lives in Jamaica Plains. I have another daughter who's teaching at the University of uh, Berkeley, uh, University of California in Berkeley. She's got two masters in political science. So it's not that, you know, I've been married 25 years. Not anymore because I've taken the step in my life. I want to renounce. I'm going to spend the rest of my life talking to people like you. I really do. I want to sing. I want to take the gifts that God gave me and give them back. 100% without any interference. So that means I can't have my kids there nagging on me. You know, going in my pocket for my wallet, you know. <laughs> now they have their old ones. They make you more money than I do. So, 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 so I decided to dedicate my life to, to, to trying to do this, to trying to give back. You don't, spiritual life is not boring. It's, that's a misconception. Spiritual life, especially in Krishna consciousness, is exciting. It's exciting. It really is. Because you're learning one of the most important lessons in life. And that is, who are you? There's no bluffing. No more bluffing. You know, you can fool everyone else. You can act, you can do like this, but you can't fool God and you can't fool yourself. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. You have to be, that's one of the first quali uh, qualities of the Brahma is he's honest. He's honest. That's why I told you the two of the personal things about me. They weren't so nice. Who wants to talk about that horrible life? But that horrible life was a wonderful blessing. You know, sometimes the bad in our life, those things that happen to us, we need to really take account of them because they're telling us that something is wrong. It's like a caution flag. When you're driving in the street, your car, yeah, and that light is green, and then it changes to that orange, amber, you know, it's a question. It means be prepared to stop. So similarly, in our lives, when all these things come up, that's the question for that. That's when you really got to look at yourself in the mirror. Not just puff your eyebrows out and put a little blush on, you know. Oh, look at me, you know. Aren't I divine? <laughs> No, no, decorating of a body is not it. It's the heart, it's inside. Your beauty, your real beauty is inside. I don't have material beauty. You know, there are five, there, 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 there's wealth, there's fame, there's beauty, there's knowledge, and there's renunciation. These are the assets that the gifts that God gives you because you've earned them. I have very little of any of them. <laughs> there's definitely no beauty here. <laughs> But it's okay, because those things aren't important. If you have them, use them. If you don't, Krishna will give you something else. Try to spare, you know? Krishna will take care of you. So there's a misconception about spiritual life. I've also been in the military. I was one of those uh, people who, you know, jumped out of the plane. Okay, paratrooper in the military. Yeah, I did that. So, I mean, I've experienced enough things to know that I'm not missing anything, really. You know, I worked in surgery for two years in a pretty sweet hospital in Marathon, Florida. You know? So that's why I'm able to speak to you here in full conviction. And I'm not educated. I don't have any of those titles next to my name. There's no PhD, CHD, uh, and none of those things are there. But the point is that we have a choice in our life. 
We have a choice. We've been given a great opportunity. Every one of you here, you could be sitting watching a tennis match or at a bar or, you know, just walking around. Maybe you've done all these things. Hey, you're here now. You've come here. You, you, you're taking refuge. You're taking shelter of Krishna, of God. You want to, you know, you're, you're in search of knowledge. You want peace. You want love. You want all these qualities that are there. And they all come from God. They all come from Krishna. We have given back to you. We kind of went off course today because of the program this afternoon. The time I would have prepared for the lecture, I was there singing at this program. So I apologize to all of you. I'm speaking a little, just abruptly, just like a friendly gathering. So I want to keep this as that type of a classroom, if that's okay with all of you. Let's just get to know each other. The other thing I say is if I'm saying this, I want every one of you out there to think for a second. If you have something that you want to say, please, I want you to participate. I don't want you to do anything, but you're invited to participate. Don't just sit here. Be here. Really be here. Be in the moment. Feel what's, what's being said. Every one of, listen to this. Miss, listen to this. Every one of you here are important in the eyes of God. Every one of you. Every one of you. And every one of you, there's an, there's an amazing reason why you're here. It's wonderful. It is so wonderful. And God is watching you, and you're going to be blessed for this. This is not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not sentimental. Okay? This philosophy about behind everything we do. I was going to say, where's my beads? And they're on me. <laughs> From the moment we get up in the morning. First of all, how many of you chant? Thank you for those who don't chant and are being honest about it. Because sometimes when you see everyone else's hands up and they're doing something, you're like, oh, me too. <laughs> So it's fine if you don't care. Um, I would like to ask also, how many of you are here for the first time? Raise your hand, please. You're here for the first time? And do you live in Boston? And are you a student? What are you studying? Masters in? Much smarter than I am. Anyone else? Could I ask you what brought you to the temple today? Wow, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That's what I'm talking about participation. It's beautiful what she said. Let's come, on, let's give her a hand. And what is your name? I'm sorry, this man said. Sadhana. Sadhana. Whoa! <laughs> um, sadhana, you've been here before. It's beautiful. Do you know what sadhana means? What does it mean? Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's why you're here. Anyone else would like to share? Come on, don't be shy. This is. Anyone? Is it? Okay, so most of you besides sadhana have, have, have been here before. Is that correct? Okay, and some of you said that you chant, and then some of you were like, you kind of like didn't know if you chanted it or, or, or not. So you were kind of like, well, if everybody puts their hand up, I'm putting my hand up. <laughs> so I chant. I chant every day. And I've been trying to chant since 1973. And I got to tell you something. Honestly, can I be honest with you? No one's, can I be honest with you? Come on. Could I be honest with you? Okay, there were times where I wanted to throw these things out the window. <laughs> because I had such a hard time. My mind was all over the place. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur says that when you wake up in the morning, you should beat your mind with a shoe. Beat the mind with a shoe. Because the mind is here. The mind is here. 
The mind is the nature of the mind. The nature of the mind is accepting and rejecting all the time. Should I do that? Should I eat this? Should I do that? Should I do that? Should I do that? You know, sometimes you have to tell, you know, when I chant, I literally have to tell my mind, okay, listen, this is my chanting time. You go sit in the corner. You know, you literally have to <laughs> get the mind. Oh, you know what? The time is this end. Oh, okay, I have five minutes, so I'll leave some time for questions. Again, I before I close, because um, this isn't a formal uh, lecture class on Sunday. Again, I've already told you why. Um, and um, I just hope that because I broke protocol that I'm invited back to speak again. What I really wanted to do is connect with all of you, every one of you in some small way. In some small way, and, and and to encourage you, whether you're chanting or not, to take first of all, to give yourself some credit for being here. Really, for being here and not being in the bar down the street, and uh, take some credit for for having to listen to me for the last. 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I thank you for your kindness in that regard. So the curtain is going to open soon, and we're going to have an opportunity to take darshan from the Lord. And let me just tell you one thing. When the curtain opens, I'd like to make a suggestion. When you see the Lord, don't just look at him, okay? And start from the feet. Look at his feet and then work your way up. Work your way up nice and slow so you can appreciate the Lord. Just, just try that if you don't mind. Okay? And then open up your heart. Because sometimes we don't see things with our eyes. Because they're imperfect. Right? When you're driving down the highway, on a lonely highway, you're driving your car, it's really sunny, and you look up above, sometimes it looks like there's water there. Isn't it? Is it like, have, has anyone experienced that driving? Hmm, come on, don't be shy. It's just a hand raise. You're not on candy camera. You're not on TV. There's no CCTV here. Actually, there is. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so how many of you have driven on the highway and you look at it as a mirage? You see, you see water, and as you go closer and closer and closer, wait a minute, there's no water here. That's that's the eyes. They're imperfect. So when you look at the Lord, when you're viewing the Lord, the Lord is perfect. But we, because we have imperfect senses, we're not able to see him properly. So we take him into our heart. We fold our hands in reverence. We bow down, humble. You know? If the president walked in here right now, everybody would be like, ooh, you know, there's some famous movie star. Every one of you, think of a, right now, individually, Everyone think of a famous movie star, singer, or actor that they like. And when you thought of it, raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to think of one. Okay. Think of someone you like. I'm, I'm not going to stop until everyone does this exercise. Okay? Think of someone you like who's famous. Okay? And when you think of that person, raise your hand nice and high so that I can know everyone's participating. Miss, you're not participating. <laughs> Don't just raise your hand. Okay, you can put your hands out. Thank you. So, so if that person that you're thinking about right now, if he walked in this room, wouldn't you be like, oh, you'd be so excited, right? What, isn't it? Should be just as excited about seeing God. Actually, you should be more excited. Because that person can't do very much for you. So I'm going to close. My name is Anumba Lopa. Um, what does that mean? Oh, there you go. It's been a pleasure getting to speak with all of you. Um, if anyone has any questions, now's the time to uh, ask questions. If I made some mistake, you can correct me. I'm not perfect. If you have some comment, this is the time to do that. So if anyone wants to say something. 
Please don't make me speak anymore. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. Thank you. So, Hare Krishna.